My guest today is Todd Horwitz. He's a professional stock trader with over 45 years of experience. He understands the U.S. economy. He's watched it through half a dozen presidents. Uh, he is an author and an educator and someone I consider a friend. Todd, welcome to the show. Stephen, always great to be with you, man. It's uh, always a good conversation. So uh, I'm going to go off the economy, but it, it's still economic. Uh, Kevin Roberts, president of the conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation, was invited to speak to the billionaires in Davos at the World Economic Forum. And in his speech, he tells the World Economic Forum, you are the world's problems. <laughs> These people are clueless. They're ruining the economy and trying to control the population. What do you what do you think about his bold statement to these people? I think he's right. OK, I mean, again, I, I think that capitalism is great. I think making as much money as you can is great. But the people that he's talking to really don't have a clue. They don't really recognize that today the middle class, if you drew a line from the upper middle class down, all of those people are in a recession. All those people are struggling to live. The people above that line are floating on air because their assets are increasing and they don't need the money. They're not living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I just got an email from one of my members that said two years ago, he had no problem living. Now they got they can't even make it paycheck to paycheck. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we know for a fact we're living in a two tier justice system, but you believe we're living in two different countries where the, the bottom half of the country is already in recession and the upper half is living high on the hog. I do. I think you can see it by if you witness going to restaurants, you know, those aren't the average working middle class people that are flooding into those restaurants. Those are people that have money. OK, you go to the grocery store, you can see who's buying what. And that will tell you, I think we are in a very serious problem in, in this country today. And I think it's been almost done intentionally based on what the, the goals of this administration, because let's face one fact. If you believe what I believe, that they are trying to turn this country into either communist or socialist. OK, very similar, very short line between the two, then they want the wealthy to survive and be very strong because the wealthy want to be the top of the food chain as well, because they don't get affected from a day to day problem that can happen. When, when you are among the wealthy, you want regulations and everybody else because it takes away the competition of people that can, can come up and fight you for your business. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you just reminded me of something that happened to me three days ago. My, my wife said, why did you bring all this, all these bakery goods home? <laughs> uh, I was, I was driving to pick my daughter up from an activity and I was driving down this street that I drive down all the time. I, I look over and I see this restaurant that's normally full. It was totally empty. I then drove a little further. There was a subway, totally empty, taco time, empty, Taco Bell, empty, I thought this this is not good. I looked at my clock, 6:48 p.m. I thought these restaurants should be full. This is dinner time. Then I drove past an Arby's and a an A and W, and they had maybe one or two people. I thought, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. So then I drove past this bakery. I said, that's it. I'm pulling over. I'm putting money into the economy. <laughs> I I I got over there, but you know what you said, it, it worries me. Is like I, I'm starting to see. These, these businesses that were booming, suddenly they're not booming as much. Other restaurants, uh, these chains, they should have a line, especially at dinner time. And I, I'm not seeing it like I used to. No, I don't think you're seeing it at all. And I, one of the problems is they can't get enough help. So the service is very bad. And people are deciding to eat at home. You know, listen, no matter how cheap it is, if you go to McDonald's, it's still cheaper to eat at home. And when you have to watch every dollar that you're spending because you can't make it from paycheck to paycheck because you can't pay your rent. You can't pay your mortgage. You know, that's a problem. So you have to figure out where to cut corners. So now we're seeing a, a massive amount of layoffs. You know, nobody's talking about that. We don't hear about that in the jobs number, but even today, Wayfair just laid off 2000 employees. Okay. Now, again, it may not sound like a lot, but 2000 here, 20,000 there, 5,000 here. Suddenly you've got a lot of people that aren't working. Where's that money going to come from? Of course, the American taxpayer will be billing them out. Yeah. Um, every time you come on the show, Todd, you you tell me to bet on America. When you and I have privately chatted or, or texts, uh, texted, you tell me to bet on America. I read just this morning that China's stock market has taken a $6.3 trillion market loss 
their economy is contracting. And the author of the article said their financial situation is falling faster than their birth rate. What are your thoughts on China? What are your thoughts on continuing to uh, believe in America? Well, I, I think, first of all, China is in a lot of trouble, which has been going on for a while. We've, we know the real estate markets are in trouble. We also know that, of course, the oligarchs will want to keep the poor people poor. They didn't like the fact that, that China's economy was rising and that their people were moving more into a middle class in China. Because if you've been to China before, it's a pretty scary place if you're an American for, that grew up in these in this country 30, 40 years ago, because it was no way, nowhere near how good it is here. There, people were almost in slavery, which is, we know that China is the worst for human rights. And I think they want to keep it that way. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if their government has created this meltdown to kind of destroy the middle class, because you know, the people that really get hurt in a major meltdown in the economy is the middle class, because the very wealthy, they'll survive and they'll actually accumulate assets during that time. The very, the middle class will get hurt and have to sell. I think, look, here's the way I'm gonna put it to you. If you can't bet on America, where am I gonna bet on? Okay, I have to hope that our system reverts back to where it was. I have to hope that we get back into something good because if we're not, we're, re we're basically, the last free nation in this world, okay? And, and if we're not gonna be free and they're taking away a lot of our freedom, I mean, the Supreme Court vote in Colorado to take Trump off the ballot, that's taking away freedom of speech, freedom of everything. So if, if, if I can't bet on America, I don't know where am I gonna go? It's gonna be a much bigger problem. So if I'm going to invest, I have to invest in America, in good companies that I think are gonna survive because I do believe America has been through troubles before, never quite like what we have now, but I do believe that it will survive and that we will get through this and that people will finally wake up and realize that they better evaluate their decision making. Yeah. You know, I, I just got off the the interviewing uh, Stephen Moore, one of Trump's economic advisors, and I, I said to him, uh, you know, didn't we go through World War One? Didn't we go through World War II, uh, 9-11? Why, why do people keep saying that it's worse now than during these wars? And he said, the biggest problem is uh, when things get tough, the government starts to pay down their debts in order to keep healthy. Instead, they've just been spending like, like the dollars going out of business, and they created this crazy, crazy inflation. He said that that's the main difference. That's what makes this so dangerous is that during hard times, they said, let's spend more money. Let, let's just burn through the cash. Let's burn through the oil. And they've put us into a really, really dangerous position. I couldn't agree with Steve more. I've been on, I've done many spots with Steve over the years, and and I couldn't agree with him more. But I, I think, I think the number one blame, besides government, because listen, let, let's be fa factual about government in general. Forget about the party right now. Government was not created to be the biggest employer in the world. The federal government was meant to be an overseer. Okay. They continue to employ in, in 2023, 63% of the jobs came from government or special programs. Okay. So now we go into what's what we're seeing here now. And the Federal Reserve is the biggest culprit and the biggest problem here because when they decided in 08, for example, to bail out the banks, why should we have bailed out the banks? You want to bail out anybody, you bail out the depositors, not the banks. Because we're, what other business can you be in? that you can make billions of dollars of profit. You can borrow all kinds of money at the emergency window at the Fed, which has never been a bigger window right now because it's loaded with people borrowing, for the banking's borrowing them, which tells us they're over leveraged. But then if I go out of business, okay, the Fed's going to bail me out, which means that the federal, the income taxpayer, you and me are going to bail them out because the government doesn't make money. The federal, the, the Fed does not make money. They make debt. So we're the ones who get to finance and infiltrate and, and pay all this debt out. Yeah. Okay. Go, going, going back to betting on America, uh, one of the best ways to do that is through index funds, um, buying, buying a portion of a large part of the economy. Um, help my reader, help my listeners just as if they're new, what are, what are index funds? What are the advantage? And then maybe what are a couple that people could research? Well, I think we've all heard of mutual funds, most likely because many of your companies, 401ks and things like that, were have been put into mutual funds in the past. Mutual funds represent a number of stocks and they represent an index. If you break the market down, you have the Dow Jones Industrial, 
you have the S&P 500, you have the NASDAQ 100, and you have the Russell 2000. Now there's more, but those are the four main indexes that we all recognize, okay? So now because of the ETFs that they have created, you can go to the SPY, which is the spiders, which is the five S&P 500. You can buy that. That's the same as a mutual fund, except you can actually trade it. You don't have to wait till the end of the day for it to be marked at price. It trades fluidly all day long. It pays a dividend. So if you believe in the S&P 500 corporations, then you would be want to be a buyer of the S&P 500. If you're a believer of technology, you would look at the QQQs. That is the that's the, the index they advertise on TV all the time. It's a great index. It's had a dramatic rally, and it's still having a dramatic rally because of all this AI. I mean, the S and P, excuse me, the Qs may eventually overtake the S and P. Well, listen, we're a technology world now, right? We've changed from an industrial nation to a technology nation. So again, and then the Russell is the Russell two thousand is small caps. Okay, which are small businesses, 50 billion and under that are, are on an index. And again, I think that the Dow, to me, the Dow is worthless. It's an antiquated average. It's only 30 stocks. And it's really not even an industrial index anymore. It's now a technology index. So the S&P 500, SPY, Q, the uh, NASDAQ 100, QQQ, and the Russell 2000, IWM is the symbol for that. And to me, if, you, if you're looking to invest and you equally diversify through those three in indexes, you get paid a small dividend. You're not going to be involved in any individual volatility of a company that may have some bad news or whatever, and you're going to continue to grow. And those indexes have grown on average at eight and a half to 10% year over year since inception. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, Donald Trump announced yesterday that if he becomes president, that he would block a central bank digital currency. He said that they're bad for the country. It would give the federal government way too much control over the people. He then used Justin Trudeau and the trucker rally in Canada as an example. Do you think that CBDC poses a big threat and should those be blocked? I think if they do that, you better duck, okay? I think that that takes away the rest of your freedom. You no longer have the freedom of where you spend your money. If you wanna do something, you wanna to go to a casino, the government knows. You are, they can now track, they can track us now anyways, through every other piece of technology. They track you through your currency. They track you from the day you're born to the day you die. You can hide nothing. You can do nothing privately. Everything you do is right in front of the government. And if they want to come down and get you, all it does it makes it easier for them to track what you're doing. If they want to audit you, they're going to come and audit you faster because they're going to see that. And of course, that will create a much bigger black market system that will help the crypto world and help other markets because the, the world will find a separate currency because they don't want to be identified at every, every expenditure they make. And I certainly don't want it. I mean, I won't be around long enough, I don't think, I hope, because to me, it's a disaster. To me, it is the worst idea ever, but it's, a, it's government's way of taking away a little bit more of your freedom and putting a little bit more control on top of you. Yeah. I mean, my, my main worry is like, let, let's say that, uh, let's say that you were to criticize Joseph Robinette Biden, the president, uh, okay, and, they say, <laughs> <laughs> and they say, Hey, we, we can't have that. It makes him, it makes him look bad and it hurts his feelings. And then they, they, they take your money. They turn off your money. You can't go to Vegas. You can't go to Florida. You can't go to Europe. They, they block you from all of that. Or, uh, they, they say, oh, um, hey, you sold a lawnmower to somebody on Craigslist and got $500. We need to know about all of those transactions. Uh, we need to be able to tax you on every time a, a single penny moves through the economy. Uh, it, it, the, the whole thing just scares me because it all comes down to a government that wants to control people. It should scare you because they they have the people in the technology to sit in an office and watch what you're doing. Now, you know they can take your money now, right? Today, even today, before before that, they can freeze your accounts. They can come and get your money, but it takes a little bit more proof and a little bit more work. Now you give them the freedom to look at everybody's basically bank account basically throughout the globe with out of one little office and have all this AI software running, hiding the red flags. Bang, you do something wrong today, they can shut your account down tomorrow. Okay? Yeah. 
would the would these central uh, bank digital currencies have uh, impeded Hunter Biden from moving so much money? I mean, he had 150 suspicious activity reports that the Treasury was seeing something suspicious. <laughs> well, then they didn't want to do anything about it. So, yes, it, it wouldn't have prevented him because unless it was the right person looking at it, it wouldn't have stopped them. Right. Yeah. Again, we have to remember, you know, how black markets work now, because now you're talking about something that could create a much bigger black market because people are going to find other ways to use currency, different types of currencies. And we've been through situations like this. This is the problem with the central banking system. This is the fraudulent part of the fiat currency system along with the central banks. Central banks have been stealing money since the 1600s in England, which is when they started. Okay, And for them to be able to convince the United States government to put in a central bank in, Paul Warburg, Rothschild, J.P. Morgan and Rockefeller. Think about those four geniuses and what they did and how much money they stole from the American people when they were able to create the Federal Reserve. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, final question. I, I appreciate you coming on, Todd. Um, did the Biden administration push too hard on electric vehicles being the savior of the world? Uh, because this morning I read that after spending billions of dollars laying off thousands of people, Ford is saying, we can't do this anymore. Look, to me, that was a scam to begin with, okay? They had billions of dollars to put up stations. You know, you know how many stations they put up so far? Two. Zero. Oh, two. Two. Okay. <laughs> two, okay? Billions of dollars. Listen, this is a government scam. This administration is trying to divide this country and trying to break you at the same time. This is, this is not, again, whether or not you believe in climate change or not, whether or not you believe in all this stuff, hey, I don't care. I personally don't, but it doesn't matter. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't. But at the end of the day, okay, we are not ready for electric vehicle technology for, in the masses. We don't have the power grid. You need to fix this infrastructure first. But instead of fixing the infrastructure, they figure out a way to, hit, to hammer the American taxpayer for more money to fund some stupid program that's never going to work anyways. And here we are going to be sitting with broken down bridges, broken down roads, and, and costing more money to survive for some ridiculous pro project that 99% of the population couldn't afford anyways. Oh, geez, Louise. All right. Uh, you, you, do, you do Monday night calls. You also do education. Um, you, you are a trader. Uh, most people are not traders, but they want to learn that. If people want to get in contact with you or, or you know, listen in on these phone calls, what's what's the best way to do that? They can just email me direct at bob at bobatrading.com. I'd love to hear from them. Your audience is great. They always ask really great poignant questions. I love to talk to them. I, I think that they'll learn a lot if they show up on a Monday night, for example, because I'm not talking, I'm talking about how to break down the market and how to look at it. I mean, I'm, I was a floor trader for 30 years first before I became a retail trader and an educator. So I, I think that there's a lot of things that we can learn about how markets act. I mean, who in their right mind? I think the market should be going higher now, but they are. So in the meantime, Bubba at BubbaTrading.com, I'll be happy to send you a link. I'll be happy to put you on any type of education I can help you with because I've got a lot of free education I can give away as well. Okay. And then uh, BubbaTrading.com, is that the best website for people to visit? It certainly is. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I'll put that down below. Uh, Todd Bubba Horwitz, thank you so much for coming on. I, your your insights valuable. You've lived through many presidents. You've seen the the markets give. You've seen the markets give. Take I've lived back. through many crashes too. Is right. <laughs> You've been through a lot. You're 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 one of the best in the business, my friend. And it's always a great pleasure to be on with you. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, sir.